Hello! I have not done a purchaser pass in a while and today felt like the day. Not only have there been a ton of new beauty launches, a ton of holiday launches, but also a lot of beauty news that I think is really fascinating that I want to discuss today. So let's just jump right in. I like to break these videos up into different categories so we can talk about things in different segments. So the first segment is one that I'm calling Elf is being weird. If you've been paying attention, Elf has been doing some very interesting marketing for a while now. They're rather exploratory on that front and I don't know if enough of it gets discussed, the things that they're doing. And I felt like I needed an entire segment today because first of all, and actually let me, let me scoot over, which side? Hmm, we'll go over here. I think this is my first purchaser pass in this new apartment. So like, let me save my editing self by actually scooting out of the way. But first of all, they're doing a collaboration with Tinder. You have likely seen this one because I feel like I've been hearing a ton of buzz about it. I saw this and was flabbergasted. It seems like such an unusual, bizarre collab, but I could say similar thoughts on many collabs Elf has done in the past, and yet they all do pretty well. Like if I were to look back on another collaboration that I thought felt a bit strange and unexpected, it would be the collaboration they did with Liquid Death, the sparkling water brand. I feel like that one kind of came and went quickly. I didn't see much of it, so I might have made the assumption that it was kind of a flop on Elf's end, but I was actually reading in Women's Wear Daily that 68% of consumers who shopped Elf's Liquid Death collab were first time Elf shoppers. So these random bizarre collaborations we've seen them do for the last few years are actually pretty successful with them. If you remember the American Eagle collaboration, the Dunkin' Donuts collaboration, well now they have their Tinder collab. The majority of Tinder users are 18 to 30 years old, so working with their favorite beauty brand was a no-brainer, says Melissa Hobley, chief marketing officer of Tinder. So the Elf and Tinder Put Yourself Out There vault retails for $45, includes a face primer setting mist bag, and the Tinder Box Lip Trio with two shades of lip oil. They also have the Elf Tinder Box Lip Trio. We've got two lip products plus a liner. And the most interesting is this little matchbook. So this retails for $4 and these are stick lippies, including five single use lipstick matches for on the go application. That is so interesting to me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'd wanna pay $4 for five single use products. And while there's nothing from this set that I have any interest in purchasing, what I thought was fascinating was the little commercial that they posted on their YouTube channel. Elf has done a few of these short, high production videos now, and I'm so impressed with the quality every single time. If you remember, months back they did like a crime documentary. They've also done Super Bowl advertisements. Like these movies and videos that Elf is putting out are so engaging and high quality. Like they're really doing something right and you can see that they have a major budget for all of these marketing campaigns. In addition to the random Tinder collaboration, they're also launching an album. Yes, a series of original songs. It's coming out October 15th. Nylon writes, collaborating with chief creative officer Office of Madewell, Chris Sogka, the collective found that music and makeup are symbiotic when it comes to trust in oneself and feeling good in your own skin. 77% of women say makeup and music give them a sense of belonging and community, and 62% of women say they use makeup and music to represent different aspects of their personality. And this is not the first music venture we've seen from Elf. If you remember back in 2019, they had a wildly viral song called Eyes, Lips, Face. If you remember this, that was a song that you were probably seeing a million videos too, where people would do these like before and afters and it would be, I'm not going to sing this, but let me see your eyes. Boom. And then like, they would like switch and do the eyes. It was like eyes, lips, face. And it would just like progressively go through the song. You probably know what I'm talking about. But anyways, Elf has had their hand in everything. They even recently sponsored a race car at the 2024 Indianapolis 500. So Elf is trying a bit of everything. We've got them collaborating with Dunkin' Donuts, American Eagle, making music, collaborating with dating apps, sponsoring race cars. Like Elf is everywhere. And this is mostly under their somewhat newly founded entertainment sector called Elf Made. And this is where they're trying a lot of these really experimental marketing ventures. So Elf is definitely a brand to keep your eye on in the coming months and years. But the next category that I wanna discuss is one that I'm calling products that should probably be renamed. And 
I'm kicking this one off with the new mini palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is their mini spice palette. And this makes almost zero sense to me because none of the colors in this palette are shades that I look at and I think, ooh, spicy. If you were to tell me before seeing the palette that Anastasia was launching a palette with the name Spice, I would envision it to be very warm tone, maybe even some reds or bold oranges, and yet this is wildly different than that. Perhaps in person these tones would present a bit differently, but what I'm seeing in the photos just doesn't make much sense to me. Outside of that, I find this relatively underwhelming, uninspiring, like for me, the biggest call out on this is just like, why did they name it that? Another why did they name it that? And this one is kind of obvious like why they named it that, but I still don't love it, but it is the new Urban Decay Moon Dust Space Cowboy Eyeshadow Quad. So the reason this name makes zero sense to me, I mean, it makes sense. Like I, I could explain why they did it, but I wouldn't have done it this way, but they named it this because the shade Space Cowboy is basically a hero product for them at this point. It was a popular shade out of the Moon Dust Shadows years ago, and then it was really revived on the internet recently as it went viral probably last year and has sustained major popularity since then. But Space Cowboy is one shade of the Moon Dust Shadows. It is the name of the shade. It is not the name of the shadows. So why the palette is named Space Cowboy is a bit strange to me. And I know it's just the name recognition of it. Like people don't think of that shadow as a Moon Dust Shadow. They think of it as Space Cowboy, which is the name of the one singular shadow. But this palette doesn't have Space Cowboy in it. It is four new shades. They're inspired by Space Cowboy, but like in what way? They're just Moon Dust Shadows. They're just using this name because it's gonna draw the recognition and people are gonna be interested in it because they love Space Cowboy. And I will be the first one to say, I love Space Cowboy. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. It's a gorgeous shadow. I think it's worth all of the hype. But none of the shades in this are the original Space Cowboy. There is one shade in it that's called Space Cowboy Rides Again but it's technically new, all four shades are new. But anyways, it retails for $39. They've done a lot with Space Cowboy this year and I predicted that in my predictions video. I said they were gonna run with that name in 2024 and they definitely have. But next up in the hot seat for names that don't really make sense, that maybe we could have reworked, maybe needed a few more revisions, uh, let's talk about the Natasha Denona I Need a Warm. That's the official name of the palette, I Need a Warm. I Need a Warm what? And I know I'm not the first person to say this. I, I just, I can't get over it, Natasha Denona. Who, why this palette is not just called Warm Nudes boggles my mind. I Need a Warm what? It's like an unfinished sentence. And I get it's supposed to be a continuation of like I Need a Nude that they already have, but once again, why not the warm nude palette? Or even I need a warm nude. I don't love that, but it makes a little bit more sense. Saying this, I need a warm. I need a, I need a warm what? Okay, but putting the name aside, this palette, uh, mm, I love Natasha Denona eyeshadows. The minis are everything to me. I have a large collection of the minis. I have one of the midis, but she's really only gotten me on the one. And I don't know that I'm the right person to be speaking about this because my eyeshadow these days tends to be very minimal. Even today, throwing on Space Cowboy was like very glitzy and glamorous for me compared to the eyeshadow looks I've done lately. So maybe I'm not the one to be talking about this because I just, don't get as excited about eyeshadow as I might have years back. But so many of the Natasha palettes are all like blurring together for me. Like they're all just rather similar. Uh, that being said, I do think the multi-chrome shade in this looks beautiful. That one is calling my name. All of that in mind, I do know that like a warm nude palette is always gonna be a crowd favorite. So I understand why they did it. Um, personally, I will not be picking this one up, but if you are, I do have an affiliate code. If you want 15% off, if you're shopping on the website, you can just use my name, get 15% off on this or anything else. Okay, so the next product under the weird names category is the Say Lip Liner that they just launched. This one, I guess, is not the most egregious name out of all of them, but they named it Say Lip Liner 101. This just feels bizarre to me because it feels like the title of something that will then be instructions. Like Lip Liner 101, do this first, do that. Like it doesn't feel like a name in my opinion. 
I understand the idea behind it, but I would almost rather it's just the 101 lip liner. Even that, I guess, is still not a great name if I'm being honest, but I, it just reads weird to me the same way I need a warm. Doesn't make sense rolling off the tongue. Say lip liner 101 feels bizarre. Like it doesn't feel right coming out of my mouth because it doesn't feel like a name. It feels like a title, but anyways. All that aside, I'm actually very excited about this and I've loved seeing the big boom of lip liners this year because you know that I have such a soft spot in my heart for lip liner. It is my greatest weakness when it comes to beauty products. So I'm always thrilled to see a new brand launching lip liner. I love seeing great formulas. This one retails for $20. And it's one that I'm definitely interested in trying out. But okay, I know we were roasting some of those names for a moment there, but now this next category, we're gonna kind of go on the opposite end and we'll, we'll speak positively about these products because this is a category I'm calling packaging I'm drooling over. So right away, I, I don't have much interest in this product and when you see it, you will know why just knowing me and everything I just said about eyeshadows, but the packaging of this, I am so pleased with. It is the new Danessa Myricks Light Work 6 palette. And why, when I initially saw this, I didn't think much of it until I watched a video from Morgan Turner explaining everything that you can do with the packaging. And Danessa Myricks has thought of everything. Each of those three pans is magnetic. Like you can rework this every which way possible. Even the mirror on the front, you can take off and make into a mini palette. You can take it on the go. You can do anything, anything you can imagine, you can do with this palette. You can rework it. Like the magnetic system included in this is genius, but also it better be because it is, wait for it, $128. It's been fascinating to watch the normalization of extremely high priced palettes in my lifetime like I remember even back in the day the naked palette was something that was a splurge and like it's interesting to discuss today because naked palette did just come back but thinking to the original launch of the naked palette which uh, I believe off the top of my head was 2010 right I just did a video on this but that was $49 when it launched and at the time it was it was pretty expensive and obviously inflation has taken place since then but even factoring in an adjustment for inflation, palette prices are astronomical these days. And I'm not just speaking about this one individual palette from Danessa Myricks, it is just one example of many. And I'm also not saying that this is not a fantastic formula. Danessa Myricks makes wonderful products. I'm so impressed with the packaging, the shade selection here, quality of her shadows is spectacular. So I, I, I understand why it's coming at such a high price point. There's so many duo and multi-chrome shades in here and I know those pigments are incredibly expensive. So this is by no means a critique of the Danessa Max brand or this one product, but it has just been really fascinating to watch how normalized palettes over $100 have become and even Going to back to the um, Patrick Ta foundation that I tested out recently, that is essentially $60. $60 foundations, $130 eyeshadow palettes. It's absolutely wild. That being said, I do think the shades look so, so pretty. I think this palette is gorgeous. I mean, it's for who it's for. And if you pick this up, I hope that you love it. Okay, also under the packaging I'm drooling over category is the new solid version of the Fenty perfume. So this retails for $68 and I can just imagine this in my purse. There's something about it that is so luxe and drool worthy. And I will say, you know, historically, I have not been a fan of the Fenty perfume and I have stated that many times in videos, but tell me what's going on that it's growing on me. It's because I was out and about one day and I smelled, I smelled someone else who I believe was wearing that, if not a very similar perfume. And I'm like, wait, you smell great. Why do I hate this perfume so much? And then I was kind of forcing myself to just like wear it, let it sit on my body. And it's still not my favorite perfume, but I don't have the same disdain for it that I used to. I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I could learn to like this. I'm gonna say it's like an acquired taste and it's growing on me a little bit. Not enough to pick up a second version of it, but if it is your favorite perfume, there is now a solid version of that. I'll be curious to see where solid perfume goes now that we've seen such a big fragrance boom in the last few years. Is this something that's gonna increase in popularity as well? 
we'll see. But the next category is one for all of the products that feel very expected. Like, yep, we saw that coming. And I have named this category, well, duh. Kicking off, well, duh, we have the Hourglass Holiday Palettes. They do this every single year. Rarely are they that different. I'm sure the Hourglass team looks forward to this because these sell out every single year. I would imagine there's not too, too much for them to do to pull these together. I mean, obviously there's new artwork on the photos, but they are relatively similar from year to year. It's a lot of carryover. Like, yeah, the shades are kind of tweaked, but they're definitely not reinventing the wheel. Let's just say that. But they're back, you know them, you, you might love them, you might hate them actually, they're pretty polarizing, but the $90 Hourglass Holiday Palettes are back. Uh, I do have two from last year, I did not purchase them myself, I would, I personally would not spend $90 on these, but it's another one of those where I'm like, it's for who it's for, and I know that there are people that love these, that absolutely live for the Hourglass powders, whether it's the blushes, highlights, bronzers, any of the above. And I know some people actually do find a lot of value in having them all in one. And if this is your go-to, it could be a good bang for your buck to get all six in here. So again, it's just one of those where I'm like, it's for who it's for. I know a lot of people absolutely would not purchase this, but then there are others that look forward to it every single year. So this, we knew it was coming, it's back. Also under, well, duh, is a, a sneak peek. This is not even officially official yet, but Trend Mood was reporting that this was gonna be the holiday launch from Patrick Ta, very similar to last year. Patrick Ta, the hold that bright pink blush has on him as both a makeup artist, but also a brand owner, it is, it, he loves pink. We, we've done every shade of pink. When I think of bright pink blush, I think of Patrick Ta, but that's probably also the reason I'm not super excited over this. It was pretty expected. I mean, same even with the Too Faced holiday collection that they're launching. I mean, it's a little bit different, but in general, when I think about holiday launches from brands, this is rarely when they're bringing us like their innovation and their new exciting things. They tend to play it rather safe with things that maybe the brand is known for or they know will do well. So, you know, they're things we kind of saw coming. Um, also under Well Duh, Milk Makeup launched a new version of the Hydro Grip Primer. Now they have a glowy version of this. You know, it's really their hero product. So of course they're gonna keep launching out like new iterations of it. A glowy version though feels a little bit delayed. I think this might've been more successful had they been able to get it up a year ago. I think we are on the down trend of the glowy base product. And that's not to say people don't still use them, but they're so widely available at this point at significantly lower price points than this. I could see it being challenging to get consumers excited about a milk makeup version. Um, also in the glowy family, Milani is launching a glowy version of their liquid blushes. This felt pretty inevitable as well now that we've seen every drugstore brand launch in an attempt to dupe the Charlotte Tilbury ones. Once again, I think this is a product that perhaps would have had better potential a year ago before everyone came out with their dupe of it. Okay, the next category we must discuss is one that I'm calling April Fools in September. Had these launched earlier in the year, I genuinely would have believed that they were fake products for April Fool's Day, starting with fragrance for dogs. And this comes from Dolce & Gabbana. Um, with the fragrance boom, I am unsurprised to see a lot of different directions with fragrance, but this is just comical to me. I wanna know who's buying this. It's obviously like a status symbol of, oh, even my dog wears Dolce & Gabbana, but it's absolutely nuts. Same with the pretzel perfume. I know I'm a little bit late to talk about both of these, but I just had to include them because what's going on? I genuinely would have believed that they were April Fool's Day jokes. Like, do you remember an actual April Fool's Day joke that I believe was this year, and I wanna say it was Pacifica. They said they were coming out with a tofu a tofu perfume. Um, this does not feel far off from that, but this is real. Okay, after roasting many products, we will get into the category of things that I'm actually very excited about. These are products that I actually want. Starting with the one that I am the most excited about, it is the new Huda Beauty Foundation. This is their Easy Blur Foundation, and 
This has been a little bit polarizing. I've seen some stellar reviews and I've seen some very critical reviews and I think that has only increased my interest in it. I wanna to get to the bottom of it. I will say though, I have been trying so many new foundations lately, whether I've purchased them myself or I've gotten them in PR, I have a stash of foundations to get through. So I'm like, Kelly, you probably don't need this, but I, I do really want it. So let me know if you would wanna see a review on this. I could be um, pretty easily swayed to pick it up. I, I really do want this foundation. I've heard such great things. I think Huda Beauty makes incredible complexion and base products. The Easy Bake is like a holy grail for me. So for this being in that line, I am imagining it to be fantastic. It is definitely a higher level of coverage than what I tend to gravitate towards, but I've seen this shift in coverage level. You know, we've gone from the extreme coverage of six to eight years ago to watch the pendulum swing the opposite direction. And we've seen the popularity of very, very sheer skin tints. And now it feels like we're kind of starting to lean back the other direction. I don't know if we'll ever get to the extreme pigment levels we were seeing previously, but it does feel like inevitably we're shifting away from that really, really low pigment sheer product and getting some higher levels of coverage. And I'll be interested to see what newer, higher coverage foundations look like because when I think back to a 2016 full coverage foundation or like 2014, something around that time frame, they definitely looked and felt like makeup. But we've seen a lot of improvements in formula and I have a lot of optimism that we could now come out with higher coverage foundation formulas that still feel very lightweight and very skin-like. I have heard some conflicting opinions on this being skin-like or not, but again, that's part of the reason I'm like, well, I wanna know, I wanna know for myself. So if you've tried this and you like it, let us know. I'm also intrigued by some minis because you know I live and breathe for mini makeup and Rare Beauty now has an additional shade of their blushes that's available as a mini. The shade Truth, which they describe as a mauve maroon. This is kind of a deeper berry shade and I wouldn't typically gravitate towards this shade, not for my skin tone, but I wonder if there's a way I could sheer this out. I think it looks so pretty on the model. So I've got a new shade available. I can't wait for the day that they have most if not all of the line available as minis as well because those rare beauty blushes take an eternity to use up so half the time you might as well buy the mini um but also we've got a new mini of the Too Faced born this way concealer they just launched a mini i was so confused when i saw this on the sephora website because the packaging is rather different than the original so i thought it was a brand new formulation i'm like no did they reformulate it because that would be the third time. If you remember, Born This Way concealer was once um, more of a medium coverage concealer before they came out with it again, reformulated it, and made it this really high pigment one that we know today. This used to be my go-to concealer. It used to be everywhere. Everyone seemed to love this one, and I feel like it's definitely fallen off in popularity because we, you know, it's a bit older. We've had a lot of new launches since then, but. I just remember being so in love with this product. I would be curious to own it again and see if I still like the formula today in 2024 and if it holds up to my other concealer favorites. So I'm curious to pick this one up as a mini. I have a much harder time holding myself back from minis. They're definitely my weakness. I'm like, oh, well, it's just a mini. I might as well. After I finished filming, NYX also announced their new face glue, which is so fascinating. I had to include it in the video because they claim that this will hold your makeup on for up to 24 hours, which almost feels like a reference back to makeup claims a decade ago when we were really seeking out this extreme wear time. And I'm sure it's partially happening as an answer to all of the skin tints that we've seen so popular for the last few years, because generally they have a pretty minimal wear time. This is obviously under the same line as the other glue type products from NYX and in a weird way i kind of hate but also really love the glue packaging of this it feels a bit funny and cheeky and i'm kind of intrigued by this product even though i generally don't seek out super long wear primers this is one i could be convinced to try also summer fridays is jumping on the bronzing drop trend but in a very weird way they're doing a limited edition set that includes their shade drops and bronzing drops for 54 dollars the website says it's very limited this feels a bit strange but i'm 99 percent sure we will see this return in the future as a permanent item and they'll say something like oh back by popular demand are the bronzing drops but as of right now they are apparently very limited and only available in this set there are also a ton of new holiday sets that were just added on sephora 
I did a full video breaking down the Sephora retailer sets that they launched. So I will have that link down below. I don't actually think they're all worth it. So I will have that link down below if you want the full breakdown. But generally every year I do a best and worst Sephora sets videos where I go into the math, break down what I think is worth it and not. Let me know if you want me to do that series again for 2024. If you have any interest in that, let me know down below. Also, let me know if there's anything we talked about today that you're interested in picking up. Let us know down below and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.